classroom teacher for over a decade, a successful coach of high school basketball and, and baseball teams. Howie has been an outspoken advocate for students, educators, and classrooms, and we thank him for his tireless advocacy in education. Please welcome our Lieutenant Governor. Good afternoon, it's so good to be here. I feel right at home when I get here to New Mexico State. Um, so many great memories that I had the opportunity to be part of the Aggie Nation, and, and I appreciate that. But when you look and see the uh, memories that I had, today was a little bit of a flashback of a memory that I really didn't uh, think too fondly of. Thanks to Lenny, Lenny back there, he was able to help me make sure and kind of put that at ease. You see, because whenever I was teaching, I was teaching at Golden High School, and I was coaching uh, baseball at the time, and I would get out of practice and rush to get to get over here to my PhD classes, and I would always seem to park where I was gonna get a ticket. So today, I wasn't sure where to park, and fortunately, Lenny was right there, and uh, thank you for getting this squared away with that. He did promise that we weren't gonna get a ticket, he just uh, promised that he, we wouldn't go to jail for it, so, so thank you for that. As I look around and I see many familiar faces, I'm so grateful to be here as a representative of you and the work that each one of you does on behalf of people all across the state of New Mexico, but specifically right here in Dona Ana County. And when you look and see the impact that has taken place, it's tremendous. And I can say that even though we knew that through eight years of difficulty, of struggle, nobody said that the battle was gonna be easy. But we always believed that it was gonna be worth it. And I think today really shows we continue, we persevere, we keep the faith, and we make sure that we always keep in mind the betterment of our children and our communities. That's what you've done. And that's why today is such a wonderful celebration of five years of work that's taken place. And the energy that I could see just when I walked in the room was amazing. And so I wanna thank every single one of you for never losing faith, for continuing the, the discussions, and even at times those battles that were lost, I know that those weren't easy because I was right there with you. But I know the possibilities and what we've seen that's taken place, I'm grateful. And I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to work alongside Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham on many of the ideas that are brought forward from community programs and community opportunities like this. That's how we move the state forward. It's not from the wonderful ideas that can come from the capital, but the wonderful ideas that can come from the barrios, from the local boardrooms, from the opportunities that you guys are providing. So I'm grateful for this opportunity to share that because it really is a celebration. And many of you have heard me speak many times, and my message doesn't change because I believe in it so much. But I do want to share a story that you may have heard me share before, but I think it's relevant now. And talking about the journey that we've taken and knowing the struggles that have been there, I'm reminded of a young boy at a very young age who when he was growing up, he lost his mother and he was raised by his father. And even though his father struggled with many issues, including alcoholism, his father was there to try to provide the best he could. And the boy remembers specifically one night when the father came in, put him to bed, he had been drinking all day, but he got next to the light and he like blew it out. And the boy says, wow, that's magic, dad. How did you do that? And he said, son, it's not magic. The light that you see is the possibilities in your life. I've missed my opportunities. I've missed my ship. But son, you have the possibilities and the opportunities for a passport and anything you want to do in life. And the advice that he shared with that young boy is something that's always stuck with me. Because he said, you see son, it's not what happens to you in life that makes a difference. It's how you choose to react to what has happened. And I think that's how we can identify and understand exactly the importance of that. Because we do see the struggles that are there. And we see, for many years as an educator, the struggles that have been there for each one of us. And I can tell you that when we look and see the huge issues that we deal with in the state of New Mexico, it's important that we recognize that now is the time, it's always the right time to value, respect, and to make sure that we show our educators how grateful we are for the work that they do. And when I talk about educators, I'm not just talking about teachers in the classroom. I'm talking about custodians, librarians, uh, counselors, bus drivers, those that feed our children, our administrators, school board members, and the list can go on and on. Because if you're a person who has 
had an impact and touched a child's life. You're an educator. And because of that, we're proud in the state of New Mexico that for the first time in back-to-back -back years, we've been able to grant and to be able to use our taxpayer dollars to give the educators the raise that they truly deserve. And so we're grateful that we see that momentum continue taking place. What I'm also grateful for is that I see the collaboration. And that's one thing that I'm grateful in sitting in those cabinet meetings and the assurance that the governor wants to ensure that we have collaboration, interagency collaboration, that we have collaboration that's taken place not only within our state government agencies, but also with our local communities. Just as Engage has brought you here today, and just as the possibilities you see that taking place, we're going to continue to advocate because the reality of it, that's how we're going to win. That's how we're going to move forward in the state of New Mexico, is to make sure that we're doing it in a way that's going to be productive, but it's going to also be inclusive. So I think when you look and see these possibilities, you see that the winds of change are taking place, and those winds of change are moving in the right direction of us all. When we look and see the collaborative piece, I'm also reminded of sitting on that Senate Finance Committee. And when I was in the Senate Finance Committee, it wasn't the most ideal time to be there in 2010, 2011. We hit the National Recession. And with that National Recession, it was difficult because we had the decision to make how we were gonna balance the state budget with declining revenues. What we were gonna do in the state of New Mexico to make sure that we would do the best we can in difficult times. And I can always remember, and I've shared this often, I can always remember whenever we would have advocates from early childhood, advocates from K-12, advocates from higher ed, and the discussions that would take place, not out of selfishness, it was out of survival. And the discussions that would say, please, I know you have to cut, but don't cut us. And my response would be, as a finance committee member, is okay, can you give me any ideas where we can either raise revenue or we can uh, make cuts? And oftentimes, the answers that would come back would be, it doesn't matter, just don't cut us. And at that moment, I made the commitment that we weren't gonna separate early childhood education from K-12 and higher ed. We were no longer gonna have a position where we were dueling against each other, out of survival, but that we were gonna be working together in a collaborative effort. And I believe that we're there. I see the celebrations that have taken place. Just this last year, the creation which took place last year was actually the creation of the early childhood learning department. And everything is a journey. Everything takes time. And I was proud in 2015 when I introduced that legislation. And when I introduced that legislation, it didn't even get a committee hearing because it was so far out of the box thinking. How can we be thinking of creating a new agency or having to cut government services? But it was a belief that came from many of you here that we had to make sure that we were going to be an approach that was going to be collaborative, that was going to be ensuring that it was going to be in a way that we can all benefit from rather than having early childhood services that were going to be branched out into many different agencies. And we saw that. Even though in 2015 we may have had Human Service Department, CYFD, the Public Education Department, and Department of Health all stood up in opposition to that. It was wonderful to see that we had the collaborative piece when we put everything together last year, every single one of them standing in, in support and saying this is what's best for the people of the state of New Mexico. And when we look and see the collaborative effort, that extends even more so because now we have a permanent trust fund that's going to provide millions of dollars every single year that will continue to grow for those services that are necessary. So just by a show of hands, how many of our early child advocates do we have in the room with us today? Thank you. Thank you for keeping the faith and continuing your work there. And when I talk about the journeys that have taken place, it hasn't always been easy. And when we look and see the components of what that's going to mean for us in the state of New Mexico, I want to specifically thank all our behavioral health providers, all our behavioral health uh, professionals across the state of New Mexico who have stood together through the most difficult of times. And as I stated it earlier, that it's not what has happened to us that is as important right now, but how we choose to react to that. And we took a huge step forward in this legislative session to finally put behind some of the darkest days in the state of New Mexico. We were able to finally put in some dollars that can help reestablish our providers who were so hit and many who were forced to close. But you in this room that have worked so hard and diligently to ensure that we're gonna provide the service as best we can is so important. Because when you look and see the efforts that are out there in the state of New Mexico, 
and you see the discussions that are taking place when it comes to adverse childhood experiences and the impact that it has on every single one of us, it ties in together to the behavioral health services that we can provide. And this isn't something that just hits for individuals in poverty. I can tell you from a personal experience, it's hit close to home. When the El Paso shootings took place, we weren't there, but we we're often in El Paso. So El Paso in many ways is something that's familiar to my kids. But the impact that they had and the fear that was brought into my son who was seven years old forced me and his mother to have to go to the schools at least once a week to ensure that we had that peace, that there was gonna be lockdowns, or more importantly, there was gonna be shooters that took place that damaged or hurt or killed what they knew to be a safe environment. So that impact impacts us all. But I do wanna address the issue specifically of poverty. Because when we look and see what happens with poverty, for far too long we heard that if you brought up the discussions of poverty, adverse childhood experiences, or other type of approaches like that, then you were considered to be defending the status quo. And we heard that often. But now through the dialogue, and through the data, and through the research, what you're able to see is that these things have a tremendous impact, positive and negative, on the well-being of that child. And when we look and see that engaged in services that you provide, we'll continue to add that. Because you've got wonderful opportunities that have come about with our community schools efforts. And just this year, just talking to David, and congratulations to all of Donata County, the Las Cruces Public School District, uh, uh, Dr. Karen Trujillo, wonderful celebration that'll take place this Saturday in opening up three more community school efforts. And where the dialogue was something that was somewhat new to many legislators, now we know across the state, because of, four, uh, because of about $25 million bump, to open up more opportunities for this is absolutely critical. Because it's no longer the days that we go in and we expect the child to have to get educated on something that's gonna be on a test. We recognize that whole child. And it ties in for me personally because of my work that I did when I stepped out of the education system. Being a state senator was difficult to stay in the education field. If I was gonna be a state senator and be out of the classroom or be a principal of a school or be a superintendent and be gone that many days, I just couldn't do it. And so I chose to leave the field of education and go into healthcare. And my job in the healthcare setting was to make sure that we were not treating that patient as just a patient or a number in so-and-so room, but treating that person mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. And by doing that, we were providing for the whole patient. Same goes for learning, same opportunities that are there. Because when we can come in and we can educate that child mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and socially, we know that we're gonna have the results. They're gonna be where we need them to be. And so I think it all ties in in one way or another. But I do wanna share with us some of the things that I think that are important that we recognize. Do I have a timer right here? Is that, is that the timer? Okay, thank you. I feel like I'm back in campaign mode, so thank you for, <laughs> for that. that. But I'd love to see the, the collaborative effort. The discussions just don't start with early childhood education, and they just don't end with K-12. Higher education is absolutely critical to make sure that we incorporate that. And this year, big discussions took place of how we can make free tuition or opportunities for students through the Opportunity Scholarship really help fulfill what the promise of the lottery scholarship was about. And because of that, we know eventually, as everything is a journey, 55,000 students in the state of New Mexico will benefit. And that's our investment to the people in the state of New Mexico, especially our students, that we believe in you. We want to make sure you get educated, and when you get out, we want to make sure that you're not facing the crushing debt that many of us have experienced. These are the possibilities, but in turn, when I talk to student groups all across the state, my ask of them is, never forget where you come from. Never forget your home. Never forget the state that you love, that I love, that we love, and that you'll continue to do all that you can to make sure that wherever life takes you, that it brings you back home if that's possible. And that's the investment that we'll continue to do. So I'm grateful that the Opportunity Scholarship had some success this year and we'll continue to move forward in that way. Uh, we also see that there's possibilities and I'm excited about the budget that we just passed. And the budget that we passed, you're gonna hear some rhetoric that's gonna be that we overspent. We didn't overspend. The state of New Mexico, we're not allowed to overspend. We have to make sure that we have a balanced budget. And the rhetoric that may be out there that's having people believe that we're living outside of our means, no, because we're investing right back in the people of the state of New Mexico. That we're gonna ensure that we're gonna put dollars in to our employees, 
to our agencies, to our school systems, and to our to making sure that our students are benefiting it, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a lot more energy that takes place there. So I'm grateful for the support that we've had with the budget. And I'm grateful for the leadership that you have here, specifically in Donovan County. The legislative leadership you have in the House and the Senate is pretty remarkable. And the way that they advocate and come together to make sure that we can get the results that are better for every single one of us, that's key. And I just want to just close on something that some of you may, be, may have heard me say before. But I want to close on this, and I continually repeat this, because I think if things aren't repeated enough, other ideas can come in. And you've heard me talk about myths, and a lot of those myths that are out there. And we laugh about them, and you, some of you have heard me say, when you cross your eyes, you better not, because it's going to stay that way. You better not eat that watermelon seed, because it'll grow in your stomach. And some of you, when you didn't get home, the lady that walks the Uganda, the Yorona, she was going to come and get you. And we laugh about those, and we don't think twice about them. But I always make sure and repeat that there are some myths out there that could be harmful. And some of those myths that can be harmful out there is one of those myths that says to be good enough is to be good enough, or to be average is okay. We've done some wonderful things in the state of New Mexico, but we have such a long way to go. We're not gonna settle back and say, we've done enough, we're good enough, because we know that's not the case. Oftentimes what we see is that it's not that we aim too high and that we miss, it's that we aim too low and that we hit. When we stop learning, stop growing, start challenging ourselves to become great. And I think that that's just a reminder to ensure that we push back against the myth of being average. Because there's no reason why in the state of New Mexico, we can't be number one. We have to start somewhere. And I believe you started that journey long ago. The other myth that I want to share is a myth out there that's often said when it comes to education. That the way that you can tell the way the whole education system is working is by looking at the standardized test scores. And I appreciate Dr. Moorhead, who's back there, who was such a vocal advocate, making sure he was doing right. Not only for the students that came through the programs here in New Mexico State, but educators and students all across the state of New Mexico. And oftentimes, when you look and see that the focus needs to be on reading the math, because that's what's measured, I believe it's time, and we're seeing that, opening the curriculum. Because the human is made up of two sides of the brain. Your left side, critical thinking, your math, your reading, and your right side, creative parts, other parts that you can do to help collaborate. Bringing those together and having, again, that approach for the whole child is important because what we've been doing across this country for far too long is across the country what we've been focusing on is student achievement, test scores, or student proficiency, which goes up and down depending on which experts that you have in the room and what's the political round of the, of the discussion times. When all along, what we should be focusing on is student engagement. You're providing that student engagement opportunities, whether students who are going into the career vocational areas, students who are going into the, the, the mathematics, the science, the STEM aspects of it, or students who may go going into other areas like computer science. Those are key. And one of the areas that I think that's important to point out is an area that's near and dear to me. Because we see what happens in our communities across the state. We can focus and provide as much as we can during that school day. But what happens when the school day is over? What happens when that 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock hour comes between that 6 o'clock hour when the parents at work? How can we provide for after school activities, after school programming that continues stimulates the brain and firing those opportunities for learning in a community setting? You guys have done a wonderful job of doing that. And I believe that you're going to see the next realm, the next frontier of education is going to really focus in on that aspect of after school programming. So I want to say thank you for those of you who have done the work already and shown us and given us data of how we can make this happen statewide. And the last myth that I want to share with you, and I want to leave with you, I think is the most important myth of all. And that myth that says to show love, kindness, and compassion is to be weak. And we hear that often. You can't show any kindness or compassion or love at the roundhouse in the state capitol. You can't show it in the business setting because you're just going to get run over. You can't show it in any type of setting because it's an atmosphere where winner takes all. I stand here today, as many of you do, because somebody showed us that kindness, that compassion, and that love to believe in us. And I can tell you it's worked for me, whether it's in the state championship game of a baseball tournament, or in the times whenever we have the breakdowns of families and losses, and where we've had to comfort parents who have lost a child. The, the formula 
works and making sure that we recognize the most powerful thing that we can do and continue to do is to show that kindness, that compassion and love for one another. Because in reality, we're all in it together. And if we want to make sure that New Mexico is that shining star that we know we can be, it's going to take every single one of us to make that happen. So congratulations on a wonderful conference that you've had. Congratulations on Lori. Thanks for all the work that you've been doing, as well as all the leadership across the community. I'm always going to be here to stand in your corner. I'm always going to be here to be an advocate. And I ask you to utilize me in my office to help you in whatever area you need. God bless you. Thank you.